Welcome to another Howls and Growls Breakdown, and today we're talking Minnesota, Phoenix, the playoffs, and what needs to happen for Minnesota to win this series. Now, by now, we kind of know the tale of the tape so far. The Suns massacred the Wolves in all three of their regular season matchups, and with the talent on Phoenix's roster, there's every chance that they come out and do that again if Minnesota aren't going to adjust and adapt within this matchup. So this video is all about what went wrong and what could possibly go right for Minnesota if they clean those things up. And to me, it's always going to start with the defense. That's how the Wolves built their record this season, and that's how they lost those games against the Suns. When you think of the Wolves, you think of defense, but when you look at the numbers in this series, you can see where it all went horribly wrong for Minnesota. Their usually stingy defense allowed the Suns to shoot red hot from every area of the floor, and the Wolves simply couldn't do enough offensively without their vaunted defense there to back them up. And the thing that jumps off the screen here when you watch the Suns just carve up the Wolves is how easily they exposed Minnesota's two big lineups. Over and over again, the Wolves found themselves punished in mismatches, rotations, and switching situations, and it was almost always because the Suns successfully hunted the best matchups on the floor against those two big lineups. You see that they are getting easy looks here on simple isolation possessions against mismatched bigs, but these matchup disasters have a trickle-down effect as well. Sometimes it's something as simple as this possession. Reed can't contain Durant coming off this ball screen. That forces Gobert to step up into coverage, and now Eubanks is slipping in behind with the low man defenders all too small to make any difference at the rim. You've got to credit the Suns for the way they're working these actions, but the slow-footed bigs have made this too easy. This time it's Towns on Allen here, and that means they're bringing Cat into a ball screen. And that's where the confusion starts for Minnesota. Right here they're in shambles, Gobert is stepping up here, McDaniels is chasing Booker still, and Towns is dropping back to tag Nurkic on the roll. And you can see the dilemma that Cat is in here. He's stuck between Allen and Nurk. He chooses to let Nurk go, and again the low man help is too small on the backside when Booker makes that feed to the roll man. As soon as the Suns get those bigs into switching or ball screen situations, the Wolves have been toast in this series so far. Here it is again, this time they execute it better. McDaniels chases through the screen, Gobert drops back with the roll man, and Towns sticks to the shooter up high. But at the last moment, Towns digs down here inexplicably, and instead of letting Gobert deal with it at the rim, they end up giving up a wide open three. And that's what happens when big men are given the job of a perimeter defender when they're playing against really dangerous perimeter scorers. And again, it's a trickle down effect. After they bring Towns into the ball screen here with Allen again, you see McDaniels is pushing all the way in here in the gap to give Towns the help that he needs. So now when Booker swings it, McDaniels is stuck here in rotation and it's easy for Allen to attack him. That's going to force Gobert to step up into help as well. And now he's out of position when Nurkic gathers the ball around the rim. So you can see where I'm getting at here and where it's all going wrong for Minnesota, but we will go through one more similar example here. It's pretty simple. Cat can't guard Beal on the perimeter. That forces Gobert to step across in help. McDaniels needs to help the helper, so he steps across onto Gobert's man, and that gives Booker the space to get his feet set on a corner three. So while Phoenix's shooting numbers are obviously insane and maintaining that kind of efficiency is almost impossible for any team, especially one facing a defense as connected as Minnesota's, Minnesota are making life way too easy for the Suns by having a big man checking one of Phoenix's four shot creating and shot making players. Minnesota have buttered their bread all season by going big and finding ways to exploit teams with their size, but it just seems like the Suns are the worst matchup possible 
to try and continue that trend. If they don't make some adjustments right away, I think this series could be over before it even starts. So the question then is what can they do? In my mind they have two options. The first one is staying big, but shifting Carl Anthony Towns or Nas Reed when he's in the game off Grayson Allen or off any guard. That's a non-negotiable. If they're going to persist with two bigs, I think they have to put Cat or Nas on Durant. Now KD is going to do his thing on Cat, we know that, but he's going to do his thing on everybody. The hope is that we see more possessions like this with KD. When he's in his isolation bag, nobody is truly going to lock him down. What Towns has shown though is the ability to do just enough to hang with him and make Durant take and make difficult shots. In the two games they've played against each other this season, Durant is just 2 for 6 shooting when he's matched up with Cat. That efficiency might not hold, but we see that Towns has the length and the foot speed to at least hang with KD in these one-on-one -on -one possessions. The real benefit of this is that Towns is no longer chasing guards off ball screens or being called into guard-guard ball screens. KD might light Cat up, but when Cat is guarding Allen, Booker or Beal, his whole team is being lit up as a result. And along those same lines, the key here might just be to go small as often as possible. You might lose some offense with one of Towns, Reed, or Gobert off the floor, but the Wolves regain their defensive advantage because they have those hellacious perimeter defenders ready to step up into bigger minutes. And we've seen it before this season when Towns was out, and we've seen it work this season. On this possession, it's Gobert at the 5, you've got McDaniels on Booker, Alexander Walker checking Allen, Edwards on Durant, and Conley on Gordon. So when that ball screen comes, Gobert can contain here and recover back while McDaniels catches up. And look what happens on the weak side. Conley can tag down on the roller, then recover to the shooter. That's a simple thing, but we saw how the big men struggled with it previously, and that means Booker is left with shooting over McDaniels as his only option. Again, a smaller guard in Morris is chasing Beal around, and that allows Gobert to play between two here in the pick and roll, and McLaughlin is quick enough to sit in here in help, but then recover all the way back to Allen, who has shifted himself into a shooting position. Minnesota just can't pull off this basic pick and roll coverage, with a big man chasing Allen on the weak side there. And this time when Allen comes up to set this screen here, Alexander Walker switches it seamlessly. That means Gobert can follow the roll man while McDaniels takes away Allen, and Alexander Walker is good enough to force Booker into that turnover. We didn't see that kind of switching with Towns or Reed in the action, and that's why it worked so much better with perimeter defenders taking away those Phoenix scorers. In fact, Alexander Walker has kept Booker to 0 of 9 shooting with 4 turnovers when he has been his direct matchup this season. If playing with smaller lineups means that Minnesota can get to that matchup and have McDaniels and Edwards around as perimeter chasers or on-ball hellhounds in those same lineups, then that seems to be the best way to really imprint the defensive identity that Minnesota has developed this season onto this playoff series. If Minnesota aren't willing to adjust, if they're not willing to make moves to combat what looks to be a fatal flaw in this series, I just don't see this one being very competitive. They do have options though, it's just a question of whether they're willing to bend their principles in order to achieve them and I'm really looking forward to seeing how they go about it. Thanks again for watching Howls and Growls, please subscribe for more.